In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform bootstrap analysis in SPSS. And I'm going to do it specifically only to the correlation, the Pearson correlation that can be estimated in SPSS. But bootstrapping can be done across a number of different analyses uh, in SPSS. Not all the analyses, but some, uh, se several of the analyses. Uh, the principle is the same whether you're doing it on correlations or means, medians, or uh, regression. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what bootstrapping is doing, but mostly this is about how to do it in SPSS and how to interpret the output, uh, as well as the difference between normally distributed data and non-normally distributed data, because that's when bootstrapping really uh, becomes very useful, is when you have particularly uh, non-normally distributed data. I'm going to do a separate video, a more general video about bootstrapping and why we should use it and uh, the advantages and disadvantages and what it is exactly. But in this video here I'm just going to show how to do how to do it in SPSS. So in this case here I have two variables. I've actually got four but I want to look at uh, the, fir the variable one uh, normal and the variable two normal. Actually I'll look at all four of them together just at, at the descriptive statistics. So I go into analyze descriptives frequencies and I'm going to put all four variables in here, and I'm going to look at the means, uh, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis, as well as the histograms. And what we'll find is that some of the variables are normally distributed and others are not. So variable 1 skew and variable 2 skew uh, are uh, substantially skewed. So one point 817 skew, 1.82 skew for variable 1 and 2. They have a mean of 98.46, 98.47, very similar standard deviation of 13.13, uh, but very, very skewed uh, and moderately kurtotic. And we can see the skew here. It's positively skewed with three uh, variable uh, cases here, but it's also skewed over here. We can see that there's a very substantial uh, floor effect, if you will, uh, and the data are skewed positively. And these could be very naturally occurring data. These could be reaction time data, for example. This is the sort of data you would get from reaction time. So there's nothing wrong with it, per se. It's just skewed. And variable 2 is skewed in a very similar way. I've simulated these data so that they have extremely similar properties. Uh, and I've also simulated them so that they have a particular correlation between them. Now if we look at the normally distributed data, they also have the same mean and standard deviation. It's only a relatively small sample size of 50. Uh, so these were specified to be normally distributed, and they roughly are. This is about what, you, what a, a normal distribution would look like with a sample size of about 50 randomly sampled. And here's another uh, series of data variable to normal that is roughly normally distributed to. I know it doesn't look perfectly normal. It's not perfectly normal, but it's roughly normal. And we can see that based on the skewness la levels. This one's here. The second one is negative 0.5, so it's a bit skewed, but not very much. Uh, and the first one's not skewed much at all. So I might want to look at the correlation between variable 1 and 2, but it's very skewed. And a lot of people might do something like a Spearman correlation in this case, but I don't. I wouldn't recommend doing that, or at least it wouldn't be my first recommendation. Uh, we can look at the correlation. Uh, let's look at the correlation, variable one to variable two, and we're doing a Pearson correlation, and we're basically violating the assumption of normality here. And some people might do that as well. So what is the correlation? The correlation is 0.28 and the p-value is 0 0.049, so it's just barely significant. And uh, some people might report this and interpret it. But is that p-value accurate? That p-value, as you may already know, assumes normally distributed data. So this, what people would call an asymptotic normal distribution theory p-value, is suggesting p less than 0 0.05 and significant, but the assumption of normality has been violated. And that's where bootstrapping comes in. Bootstrapping doesn't assume normally distributed data. And so if I had these data, I'd want to be able to uh, confirm 
this uh, 0.049 p-value with the bootstrapping utility, which does not 